Today, I want to talk about red light therapy and some new, highly actionable and very exciting data related to red light therapy for improving vision. Very briefly, what is red light? Red light is long wavelength light. We measure light in nanometers and long wavelength light, like 670 nanometer light shows up to us as red, whereas shorter wavelength light, like 400 or 500 nanometers, would show up as ultraviolet blue or green. Okay, so different wavelengths of light show up to us as different colors. How did this study use red light? Well, they had people view red light for three minutes once a week. The red light they used was about 670 nanometers, although it's not so crucial that it be exactly 670. How did these people react? Well, they had a 17 to 20% improvement in their visual acuity, which is their sharpness of vision. That is very significant. How did it work? Well, light enters the eye this way, so the lens of the eye would be here. And lining the back of your eye, like a pie crust, is a three-layered structure called the neural retina. The neural retina is part of your brain that got squeezed out of the cranial vault during development. It is the only piece of your brain that lies outside your skull or your cranial vault. The back of the neural retina is a cell layer that contains two kinds of cells, rods and little stumpy ones called cones. The rods respond to light under low light conditions and the cones under bright conditions. The rods and cones are responsible for converting photons, light energy, into electrical signals that the other cells of the retina can understand. And then the other cells of the retina, in particular these cells, pass that information off to the brain and you create visual images with your brain. Now, these cells, the rods and cones, are very important and even more important to know is that they are the most metabolically active cells in your entire body. They require immense amounts of energy, or ATP. ATP has a direct relationship with the mitochondria. Mitochondria are just a portion or a little organelle within the cells that's responsible for generating energy. Over time, in these photoreceptors, there's a buildup of what are called reactive oxygen species, which limits the ability to which the mitochondria can make and utilize ATP. It appears that red light viewing for three minutes a week at a particular time of day that I'll talk about in a moment allows a reduction in reactive oxygen species and improvement in ATP production and utilization. That in turn allows the photoreceptors to convert light information into electrical signals more readily that the other cells of the retina can understand. And then these cells, the so-called RGCs, retinal ganglion cells, pass that information off to the brain through a really thick wire that exits the back of your eye. That wire is made up of what we call axons. And those axons send electrical signals to your brain, and that's what allows you to realize, aha, that's a particular person's face, or that's a particular scene in your environment, okay? So the important thing in this study is that the red light viewing was done for three minutes once a week, although it's clear it could also have been done one minute three times a week, and that light viewing has to be done within the first three hours after waking, and the people were on a kind of a standard schedule of to bed about 10 p.m. plus or minus two hours and waking up 7 a.m. plus or minus two hours. But the exact time isn't critical. It's just that it has to be done within three hours of waking. Now, what's really remarkable is how little red light exposure was required for this effect to take place. Now, if you're going to explore this, a couple of things. First of all, the study I'm referring to is from Glenn Jeffrey's lab at University College London. I know Dr. Jeffrey really well. I've known him for a number of decades, actually. He's a phenomenal researcher. So really solid data. This is the second of two studies exploring red light therapy for improving vision. Again, it was one three minute exposure, although you could do two or three times a week for slightly shorter amounts of time. Absolutely blink or close your eyes if a light, any light, not just red light, is so bright that it inspires you to blink or close your eyes. Never force yourself to keep your eyelids open to look at a particular light source because you can damage the neurons of the retina. And once they are gone, they do not come back. In fact, lack of particular sets of neurons in the retina is the cause of major forms of blindness like glaucoma, retinitis pigmentosa, etc. So you're not going to burn or destroy the cells of your eye if you follow your blink reflex. But don't look at anything so bright that it's painful to look at and force yourself to keep your eyes open. Definitely blink. What about sources of red light? Well, there are a lot of them out there. You'll find red light sources that are small, about the size of a phone. You'll find some that are very big, maybe even five or six feet tall. They're about the size of a person. They can be quite expensive. There's a huge range of costs out there. Cost is probably not relevant in terms of the study, meaning in the particular study that they use, they actually put a red light filter over a standard flashlight. The study was done in the UK and over there they call flashlight torches. Uh, so they called them torches, but these were not flame torches. These were flashlights with a red light filter so that the red, 
the light coming through, excuse me, was of red wavelength. All the other wavelengths of light were filtered out. So you could imagine developing a um, homemade device, or if you like, you could go with a, one of the commercial devices that's out there, if it's within your budget. Those commercial devices also are related to claims about red light improving mitochondria in other tissues. That is not the subject of this particular post. I'm still searching for good science to support the idea that red light can improve other tissues. The data right now really point to the fact that red light can indeed support the health of this tissue, the neural retina, which again is a piece of your brain. A key point before you make that decision is that the red light therapy was only effective, that's right, the red light therapy was only effective for people 40 years and older. But again, if you're 40 years or older, you have generally healthy eyes, but maybe you're suffering from some age-related uh, vision loss, perhaps you want to explore one to three minutes, excuse me, three minutes once a week or one minute three times a week of red light therapy. Definitely make it within the first three hours of waking.